Hey guys, welcome back to episode 8. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us. We have Roberto Bautista with us. He is the music director of Christ for the Nations. He's also a really good friend. Roberto, glad to have you here with us. Thank you for having me, man. So, um, today's episode, we're going to be focusing on preparation and practical tools to help us. So, I think this is a really special um, episode where, where um, worship leaders can know what to do and how to do stuff in the practical side. So, our first question to you is, what is the role of a music director and what makes a good music director? Awesome. Thank you for having me. Uh, going on the first question, I think um, the role of a music director, it can it can be different depending on the church, uh, depending on on um, the place that uh, that you're performing, the, the position of a music director. Mm -hmm. um, but in my experience, uh, being a music director for more than one team, um, the, the key things uh, concerning the, ro the role of the music director is... Um, I will say the first one and most important one is to serve the worship leader and serve right. the vision, serve the church, serve as a key word and a key element when it comes to music director. You're serving and you're um, helping everybody navigate through the vision, navigate through um, what the worship leader wants to bring um, mm. during the services. What makes a good, uh, good music director um I'll put it simple. I think as a music director is responsible and um, passionate about what he's doing. Mm, that's good. That's pretty much a mu good music director. We can go into details and to uh, how much preparation he takes. Right, right. Or what are the things that uh, that his uh, music director is supposed to do. Uh, but I think it's passion and, and responsibility. Right, right. And let's go into that a bit more. You know, here in CF in CF and I, you're you're a music director. What are what are some of the things you know that you can lay out for us that you do on stage? You know, are you are you keeping the team in order? Are you are you making sure nobody everybody comes prepared? You know, yeah. Uh, do you do you sometimes take over um, even the worship leader spot because sometimes you know um, they just get lost? Sure. Um, well. Uh, we're talking about two different uh, moments right now. Right. Uh, but I want to clarify. So uh, when it comes to preparation, there is a period of preparation before you get to, to a stage, right? Mm. So uh, my role in that sense is that I have to prepare char charts. I have to prepare uh, audio references. I mm. have to pre pre prepare tracks. I have to prepare everything and provide all the musicians the, source, the resources that that they need to come prepare to the rehearsal, right? Mm. Um, and then you're talking about the other moment that you're talking about is once we are right. worshiping, what, right. once on we stage. are on stage doing the set. And yes, the, there is a role uh, that that is on our shoulders as music directors um, when it comes to to an spontaneous moment, or when it comes to a transition. Um, we have we have a say. We we are we are the mastermind behind um, how the service is gonna flow. Mm -hmm. How we're gonna go from this uh, moment to the next one. How we're gonna transition from a, a song to another. And when you ask about helping the worship leader w when they get lost, um, I think we are there to help. So right. um, a lot of times, worship leaders are really into. Um, a moment that they're having with the Lord or a moment they're having and all of a sudden they're done but they forgot that the service is going. Right. So that's where we step in um, and we can call instrumental or we can we can ju just be that bridge mm. or that life-saving kind of situation right, where right. we provide an environment for the worship leader to come back and decide where he, where he wants to go mm. and not, not let it be an awkward moment. Right. Um, I think that's the that answer. Yeah, answer yeah, yeah. It does. It right? does. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Let's go on to our second question. So, um, and we really want you to elaborate on this because I think this is going to be really important. What makes a good musician? So, so let's talk about you know when you're doing auditions here right. here at Christ for the Nation. So, what what do you guys look for? What are some of the key factors that you guys look for in musicians? Yeah, so here at Christ for the Nations, um, 
the audition process that we have and the audition process that I've seen that that has worked for the past couple of years is uh, I'll send out a couple of songs in general they're gonna be pretty easy they're just gonna have a specific parts mm -hmm. that I want I want to hear I want to hear the musicians play right makes sense so I'm gonna send Lion and the Lamb for the for a guitar player for example I am looking for the guitar player to to learn the part to bring the right the right tone to bring the right the, to prepare with the right effects whatever he has to do uh, I'm I'm expecting from him to mimic that to to reproduce mm. um, to reproduce whatever I gave him and right. I, that's that's one of the things so uh, and it's pretty simple and um, other than that once that once a musician is prepared I'm expecting from that from them from them to show me what they what they are you know right right um i'm not talking about them showing off on stage it's just about them playing what they know playing mm. playing playing their heart out you right. know i'm looking for that uh and what i see a lot of times here at Christ for the nations is like we have a lot of good musicians Uh, and they just come to to auditions and they don't know the songs or they don't prepare right. or they can just show up and think like, oh, I'm good. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I'm just yeah. going to show up. I don't need that. I don't, I don't need a musician. You're a problem. Like, True. you know, yeah. if I get a musician like that in my team, I'm getting a good skill level mm. over a good heart and a good spirit yeah. and, a, and, a, and, a, and a good personality, somebody that is uh, – easy to work with against somebody that that is not going to be easy to work with because he's the best or he thinks he's the best you know mm. and and it's all about teamwork and i'll put it like this i would rather have somebody humble and responsible than somebody skilled and not humble right and yeah, prideful whatever yeah. you know yeah that's good that's good um and and kind of going off of that a bit what what are good rehearsal methods you know after you've gotten all this you know quality and good musicians what are good rehearsal methods that help keep your practices in order you know you can go on time and everybody's happy and stuff like that so what what, what are some good methods yeah uh i'm gonna fail you on this <laughs> i'm gonna i'm not gonna be the one that loves rehearsals so, and i'll and i will tell you why But uh, there is a ton of methods to rehearse, right? right? There is from, like, uh, coming and figuring out the songs on stage. I'm a total, totally against that. <laughs> to um, bring in a bunch of charts and be on, 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 on rehearsal, playing a song, looking down to a chart. I am against that, too. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, To me, in my experience, and and I say this, and I will encourage encourage this all the time, um, is that the most effect effective rehearsal method is for the music director and the worship leader to create a culture. Mm. And what do I mean by this? I mean by this that we need to create a culture where. All of you musicians know that they have to show show up way, way like prepared. Yeah, yeah. for what we're about to do. Mm -hmm. Like I'm expecting my best player to know my parts. I'm expecting the drum to to know the song up and down and know how the bass line goes yep. and know everything. Because I am giving you the songs a week before. Yes, don't show true. up to rehearsal and play the wrong groove or play the wrong part. Yep. At least I ask you to do something else. Mm -hmm. um, and that that goes back to like I don't know if we're gonna touch on that, but it, it goes back to preparation. You know, like mm. like I'm expecting every musician to be to work at his house to right. work before rehearsal right. and come to rehearsal not to figure the song out or to ask the the other musician. Uh, so how does this go? Like, what what's the line? Or, mm -hmm. or what's the chord? I'm expecting everyone to be a music director. I'm expecting everyone to be excellent. Right. And and I always say I don't like rehearsals. Mm. And and I w when I say that I'm not trying to be mean or whatever. Right. Right. 
I'm trying to be excellent because rehearsal has become uh, a place, a place for sloppiness, you know, like mm, for like, yeah. oh, co let's come together and let's just figure it out. Mm. When it's like when if you think in a higher or in a more professional level, mm -hmm. rehearsal doesn't they don't exist. Right. You get the songs, you go on stage and you're supposed to know everything. Yeah. Makes makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, my 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 advice is like, for every worship leader or whoever is listening to this, make create a culture, create a culture of excellence, create a culture of rehearsal where you don't have to come to rehearsals and and figure out this stuff on the stage. Yeah. But come to rehearsal to put it together. You mm -hmm. know, a song needs one run through. Yeah. That's all it, w it should need. Mm -hmm. At least you want to do. And I'm saying, like, if you're a music director that you like to change stuff and to do different arrangements and to do this and that, then that will need a little bit of practice. But if your musicians, are, they know the song, right? that shouldn't be a problem. Mm. That should be four, my min four more minutes, and then you're good. That's what I will say is an effective uh, yeah. rehearsal method. Yeah. yeah, that is good. And I think that's going to help a lot of worship leaders um nowadays um so yeah we're just gonna end off with um this last question that we always ask our guests speakers is what would you tell your younger self when you first started in ministry so in context with um with pre preparation in context with being a music director you know what would you tell yourself as a as a, in, in your younger state Um, now with all the experience that, that yeah. you know yeah I I think I will go back like thinking about me playing at church years ago right I wish somebody had told me what I just told you about creating a culture of rehearsal mm -hmm. why because I spend with my with my bandmates and with uh, my worship ministry we spend too many hours true that we could have been doing something else you know like seeking the lord or preparing or improving in our instruments just rehearsing yeah why just we would show up uh to church monday tuesday friday every day to practice for four hours wow the same five songs because we thought that was it that was that was it the more you play the more you the better you get right and and not seeing that approach i i go back to it it was it was a fun time you know mm -hmm. but it was a waste of time Right. You know, like now I see how I can learn 25 songs in in the same four hours mm -hmm. instead of playing the song the same four songs for four hours. Makes right. sense. Right. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was something that I would totally like I wish that I knew that or right. somebody told me that. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Ago. That's awesome. Well, Roberto, thank you for being with us. Thank you for imparting your knowledge to thank us. We're so glad. Me, to have you so thank you guys